Hello there, Nakutsu here, back with another speedrun commentary, and today's game of choice is MacBat64. This indie game came out in April of this year, and it was the second game that I decided to try and speedrun, and this personal best took me about 7 attempts to get 10 seconds away from breaking the speedrun record. Mapback 64 is a retro style game similar to the older platformers from the Nintendo 64 era, making it a big reason why I chose to play through this one. The game is pretty fun for what it is and the difficulty was easy all around making it another good game besides Murray to speedrun since the stages are pretty short and the game isn't long in general. That's a small introduction to this game and how I got started with it. Now into the actual speedrun. One of the things that you have to really worry about in MacBat 64 is the movement. I would say that is literally one of the hardest things to kind of think about in this game. But luckily it is also not as hard because that's the only thing you really have to focus on since there isn't any combat system in this game. It's just mostly going around collecting things in order to get more stuff to give to either characters or just to get through a whole level in general. So one of the easiest things about this game is just trying to figure out one of the routes to go through but the hardest part is definitely the movement as you'll see throughout this whole playthrough um, you can see that the first world or level or whatever you really want to call it is completed and in total there is going to be 10 in total so there isn't like too much there are extra levels but this is just an any percent run that I'm going to be going through for map at 64 and the beach is one of the levels that you really get to try and first memorize and since this is a lot of collecting in this whole game um, you have to really worry about how many flaps you do when you're flying around because in total you can only do nine jumps So including from their first jump then you can do eight more flaps and that is the thing that takes a little while to get to manage um, Not as much as when I play some other games and try to attempt to kind of speed run through those but this one Just trying to actually learn how to utilize and see sometimes it feels like I get more speed going to different places using the jumps, but other times it's actually better just to kind of walk. So I was trying to find that balance between walking and flying as I'm playing through this. And the main objective of this whole first area is to get four balloons in order to get that key out of the cage, which is really weird when you think about it. It's like a key to the world. So I had to kind of get it out. Ah, it doesn't really make much sense. So don't really think too much into it. Um, otherwise, as far as the actual game is, it's actually a pretty fun game, pretty short, like the first time I played it, it took me around a couple hours, but after I got pretty good at it, I decided, yeah, it's actually really fun, pretty short, so I decided to give it a go and have some fun, and I did have a lot of fun trying to speed run. and another technique you kind of just see me right there use is if you use your flaps multiple times, so if you really like hit that button you actually kind of go faster than or you could just you know normally use it jumping around so it's kind of weird how it works um i feel like sometimes i don't utilize that faster buffer when flying and i feel like that could be really useful in some instances but like right here i feel like using this actually might have been a little bit more efficient if i used it a lot more on this stage but i still don't know like if sometimes it's better just to run because the run speed is actually pretty good in this game did i mention this is the <laughs> third level as well um this is probably the most puzzle like you'll get in this game and it's a homage to the zelda classics as you would think you got the shield sword in the hat It doesn't last as long as you would think it would. Uh, this is definitely the hardest part here, trying to get your shadow and yourself lined up, but that is something you can really get a lot of time saved if you really get good at it. And I did a really good job here. This is actually the best time I got on the shadow. So with that, that was like one of the parts I kept restarting over and over. 
after I got that one, I just said, okay, let's go with it. The other levels are pretty easy compared to this one. Maybe not the second last level because it has like a lot of stuff and I didn't play that as much as the beginning, but pretty, pretty good so far. I say how the run went. I mean, considering it only took around like seven or eight attempts in order to actually get through this, I feel pretty proud of myself. And this is a glitch that I found from Bing Ching, Bing Chang, I think, who is the uh, speed run holder for this game. 1421 was his time. And you can actually slide up to the left of that mountain and then slowly glide to the right with the analog stick, which was very helpful. It really makes it easier to, you know, complete the level as you skip a lot of stuff, a lot of collectibles. So that saves like a ton of time. It's like, it's really recommended to learn that and it didn't take me that long probably like five minutes to get pretty good at it but you really have to manage your little flight when you're going up that mountain because you have only a limited amount of times before you fall down here is a awesome level a homage to yoshi story as a lot of this game as you're seeing so far are big references to other past nintendo 64 titles which i found is pretty cool and it was it, i guess that's what kind of made me like it a lot i guess this game really captures the nostalgia and the developer definitely created a nice fun simple game so it's just something that you know if you're a big fan of this era i think you would really enjoy this kind of game um, there's nothing much to this level to talk about as like the previous ones. It's pretty straightforward as long as you use your flight and manage that. It's actually one of the shorter levels because after that you actually get the key and that's it. The world is completed. You, know, you can see that this game doesn't take long in general. That is actually going to be four, three, four, five. We're actually getting pretty close to the halfway point. This is Tubular City. I don't think this is a really a reference to any game, unless I'm mistaken, but uh, I couldn't tell you anyway. This level does have like probably the best music in the game. That's a very good level in general. It's a really fun level. It's, you know, again, it's short, but it does have some games that's coming up that you kind of want to look at. And it's a little bit RNG based. This is like, one of the few things in the speed run that's RNG based. So this first game, you have enemies coming from the right and wherever they come from, you're not going to know. I kind of got lucky right there. Actually, I got really lucky. Um, I was really fortunate that it didn't go to the top or bottom. So that saves like a couple seconds or so. So you're really at the mercy of really where the enemies spawn. And right here, you can be... I actually missed that. So that was like a second wasted right there already. So I definitely know like... A few instances in the game so far, like the forest where I kind of kind of utilize my jumping and flying to a better ability. And right here, I could have used that a little bit better if uh, the RNG was kind to me. This is also RNG based. And this is another area where you can't, I could have probably like saved like a few seconds here just because I was very scared because sometimes a hitbox of those squares are a little weird and if you mess up once you're a set and that's that wastes is uh, a pretty huge chunk of time so like if you mess up there you might as well start over again unless you're just practicing for the sake of practicing but oh uh, man I, I really have to like get brave when i speed run sometimes i think that's probably one of the few things that it like really hinders me because i like i don't want to mess up but i know i I have to like try and go for it sometimes, which actually turns out really good in the end. Uh, this is pretty self explanatory. Just dodge the barrels going down the street, and that is pretty much it for this whole world right here. Pretty easy. Still, probably one of my favorite worlds due to the aesthetic of it, you know, having that retro 70s vibe feel and music. Plus, the games were a nice touch. Always nice to see like games inside a game. Next up is going to be a Mac race. This is a, another reference, another throwback to the Mario Kart series. 
specifically the one on Nintendo 64 as we have the uh, our, our uh, captain here kind of cheats going in the beginning. This is a really easy race compared to what you might think. There's only two abilities, boost, and you also have this squid here, octopus, squid, uh, it has to be a, I don't know, and it has like four tentacles, I, I have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that thing can actually go over the oil slicks just fine. While if you have the boost, that still kind of slows you down. So you want to stay away from it. And one of the things that I actually tried to do here when I was practicing speed running this particular level is trying to see if I can go over the grass. But if you go too far over the grass, you are actually screw yourself over because I don't know how. I don't know if it's intended or not, but the programming is weird because the enemies or should I say the other racers will like pass you. And if they pass you and you try to get back on the track, you'll actually not be able to get in the first place even if you pass them again it's like really weird so the best thing is to just like kind of go in the grass but really not too much it saves a little bit of time though and the controls are really uh stiff so it's uh something to get used to sometimes the other racers will pass you I have no idea how it works, but I know one time I got like screwed over, so I have no idea how the programming really works there. This level is Moody Mansion. This is another level which you can do a couple skips. One up here is actually hitting that banana because it teleports you right back. To the beginning so that saves around probably like five seconds or so and in here you can get the key but in order to get through this really quickly there are combinations that normally you wouldn't actually know about and you would have to use a key and do a couple other rooms and in one room it actually tells you what buttons you need to hit in order but since i already played through it you can actually go over here and you know skip through the whole level which is pretty cool not sure if that was intended for speedrunners, but that is just another trick. If you do go through this game, make sure you take advantage of that. And here is the second last level before the final boss, the water factory, and definitely the area I played the least. I noticed like in a lot of these speed runs that I usually tend to do, the later levels are the hardest ones to kind of get to because uh, I wouldn't say particularly in this game because you can do it like over and over, but I know in some games, for instance, when I was going through Murray, I actually had to like get through, you know, a part of the other game before I could really work on that last boss and the last area. So some games are really tough when it gets to that. So I guess like depending on the game, depends on how much time you really have to spend. I, 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 I did pretty well in this, I guess I could say, like... The order might have not been as efficient as it could have been. So like with this level, the forest level, that one mini game that we played in Tubular City, I think all that combined probably equaled up to around 10 seconds or so, or at least seven seconds at the very most. With that, that is pretty much most of the levels. The last one is just a boss fight and a little bit of platforming at the end. And this is where you face off against King Melon. And uh, the first part of this isn't RNG based. You just have to dodge the hands that come out. And after you dodge both of the hands, there will be a button that pops up in the middle so the easiest thing is just to literally be in the middle uh, after that when he goes into his next phase it's a little bit more difficult as the rng can either be like uh, uh actually you'll see when it comes up right now yeah there's like buttons here four buttons and depending on where you are you know it it kind of does randomly select another button uh, I'm not sure if this matters because our hand has to follow you anyway. I'm not sure if like the hand crashes down after a certain period of time or if the hand actually just has like a set time. 
regardless only takes three of those buttons to actually get to the last part and after that you just do some platforming and that is pretty much it with this game uh, a last thing you can do right here is is carefully use your I have no idea why I did that I don't know why I like did that 360 I think I got nervous I was gonna fall or something but uh, <laughs> regardless you can skip the last platform on the left and just go directly to the cannon and that is it and once you hit that last little stamp that is basically it with the run got to a pretty good time <sighs> Sadly, I wish I could have done a little bit better on that, but you know, regardless, seven attempts, about 10 seconds away, I say that is a really good job, and I was really proud of myself for actually doing it, and I hope you really enjoyed this actual commentary. This was a lot of fun to do. It was a really fun game to go through, and I'm not entirely sure what the next game I'll put up on this channel in terms of of speed running will be but you know I'll be back when that happens and also stay tuned for the non commentator version of this run as you know I'll just upload this about a week and then in another week I'll actually probably just upload a non commentator version of this regardless everyone thank you so much for watching this video go out and give this game a try if you do so and until next time take care and i'll see you next time <laughs> later everyone